for it. If you look at it from a number standpoint, I guess, you realize that Democrats and Republicans in published giving have roughly equivalent super donors, except that Sheldon Adelson and uh, and uh, the Koch brothers, particularly if you count the Koch brothers non-electioneering, you count they're not just political donations, outpace folks like Tom Steyer. But there are also billionaires supporting Democrats. If you look at millionaires and multimillionaires, it's not close. There are many more millionaires and multimillionaires who are and donate to Republicans. If you look at corporate contributions, it's not close. Corporate contributions significantly benefit Republicans. If you look at lobbyist contributions, lobbyist contributions, usually pretty well overlapping with corporate contributions, significantly benefit Republicans. If you look at small dollar contributions, people given, yeah, maybe 250 bucks, maybe $2.50, maybe $25 to a candidate for Congress, to a candidate for the legislature, to a candidate for president. And I don't just mean if you're Bader or Wark, and I certainly don't just mean if you're Bernie Sanders or Barack Obama. That adds up to a lot of money. And it ends up being the single biggest financial advantage that Democrats have right now. Politico story that just came out that is discussing the Republicans' desire to try to match that. We want to get into it a little bit. Act Blue is the leading platform. It is where the vast bulk of this online donation activity is happening. And we've got the chief of Act Blue on with us right now. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us. I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, do you occasionally uh, just like take the Act Blue money? I don't know if you print it out or cash it and just swim around in it in like a swimming pool that is large. Never. Um, we we take it very seriously that uh, we are kind of this in in between conduit of small dollar donors, uh, their contributions and the end points that they're trying to donate to. So we try to move it uh, as quickly as possible. But it is true that we are printing lots of checks and sending lots of wires and sending money out uh, at a pretty substantial pace these days. How much how much money w ran through Act Blue in the 2018 election? So from uh, January 1st, 2017 till now, folks used our platform to send $1.6 billion wow. uh, to candidates and communities around the country. Wow. The average contribution size was around $40, and folks sent money to about 15,000 different candidates and committees and charities around the country. And how long you how long you been doing it? I, I, I remember when ActBlue was just getting started, it was a neat idea and ended up getting some traction. And now one point six billion dollars. Wow. Uh, how yeah, long how long you been doing it? Uh, me personally, I've been here since 2005. ActBlue has been around since 2004. Folks have used our platform to raise around three billion dollars total. So half of that has been in the past two years. What do you account for the significant growth in Act Blue over the last two years? Is it is it Democratic energy? Is it anti-Trump? Is it the maturing of the platform and the organizing that people are doing by not only giving directly to a candidate but starting little groups within Act Blue? What do you chalk it up to? It's absolutely all of the above. Um, you know, we've been building. We're kind of an unusual animal. We offer this nonprofit infrastructure for everyone on the left to make it really simple for grassroots donors to be able to connect with the campaigns and causes that they care about. And that has been something that has been growing as a movement over the past couple of elections. And at the same time, we work with technology, and the way that technology interacts with all of our lives has been growing over the past ten years. And so we're all using technology to kind of send these signals and participate in the things we want to participate in. Obviously, uh, the White House and having Trump in the White House has certainly spurred this unprecedented level of civic engagement across the country. You're not only seeing more online contributions, you're also seeing people marching and people protesting and activism in ways that we haven't seen in this country before in the past few decades. 
But on top of that, one thing that we saw as well is that part of that activism has led to these historic numbers of candidates who are running. You heard all of these stories across the board about Democrats fielding candidates in more on the federal level in more states than they had ever done before. And a lot of first-time candidates, people who are stepping up in this moment and saying, yes, I want to make this world a better place. And we also saw grassroots donors were really excited to be able to support all of these new candidates who maybe didn't have a traditional fundraising network and help them get their voices out there. And looking at the different compositions that we're going to see uh, in Congress and all of the new women candidates who are going into Congress and all of the new young people and people of color who won offices across the country, um, it's easy to see how being able to connect with all those small dollar donors has really not only helped Democrats take back these chambers, but also changed who could run for office. And that's very inspiring. Talking to Aaron Hill, the chief of Act Blue, who gathered and distributed $1.6 billion in the last two years in the run-up to the 2018 election. The Politico piece, which presumably not only you've read, but is you know gotten a few people in your shop talking, although you're also probably talking about the <laughs> $1.6 billion, uh, the, uh, with with Republican operatives saying, we got to match that. We got to do that. My question is essentially, can they? Is your is this is the disparity in small dollar donating more because of a technological advantage, more because of an organizing advantage? You've been doing this for a while, so things were really ready for this. Or is there something more fundamental at stake or not at stake, excuse me, uh, uh, underlying this that would make it harder for Republicans to play? What would it take for them to do it? Can they do it? Well, it's been gratifying, I think, to see Republicans getting the credit for this historic election where it should be, which is for all the small dollar donors that powered this. This is certainly a movement that millions of Americans were part of in terms of taking back the House and trying to take back all of these state legislative chambers. They have tried before to kind of copy the technology that we have, but our technology is, you know, we're very proud of it. We are this central kind of infrastructure. We're a nonprofit. So we really focus on what our mission is, which is to make it easier for small dollar donors to be able to participate. And I think that has been really key to our success when they've tried to have these attempts uh, to copy what we do in the past. They've always done it as kind of a for-profit enterprise. And I so think they can um, swim around in the money in a big swimming pool. And luckily, that's yeah, not how you yeah. do it. Priorities not in the right place. But I think also um, in order for this to work, it really bottom up. You have to be able to empower grassroots donors. We believe that our democracy should be owned by the many and not the few billionaires. And I'm not sure that that's how they value that in the same way on the right. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, it, it, I don't. I don't know. Like I can tell a couple of stories, which is why I was more interested in, in your perspective. Uh, one that it's uh, if one's argument is that the people need to be in charge, if one's argument and, and one's argument includes uh, areas with lots of people with laptops, et cetera, if one's community is more like the progressive community, is there something just sort of baked in that gives a low donor advantage, low dollar donor advantage to progressives? Although I remember when they were doing when the Republicans had a huge advantage in direct mail responsiveness, maybe it was just because they were ahead on the technology. I, that was certainly true. Um, I, I think that they're kind of missing the forest for the trees, though. You know, it's not that Act Blue helped deliver this blue wave. It's millions of small dollar donations yeah. have done that. Those are individual contributions from individuals across the country. And small dollar donations, it's not just money in the bank, which is important. You need money to run successful campaigns. But it's engagement. It's 5 or $10. It's people responding to emails that they get and chipping in 5 or $10 and saying, yes, I believe in this policy. Yes, this important campaign milestone. I want to support that. Yes, I like what you're doing here. I'm going to be part of that. It's this current, like, continual engagement that our candidates and committees are having with their grassroots. And uh, then, you know, if you're investing 5 or $10 in a campaign, you're also going to follow that campaign. You're going to want them to be successful. You might volunteer you're to tell for friends. them. You might, yeah. might call for them. You, you'll vote for them. Yeah. And I think that... If all the Republicans are seeing are dollar signs, then they are really missing the point on what's going on on the left. And uh, I don't think that um, 
that would make me question how their infrastructure could be built. The other thing is that we all work together. So we want to make it really easy for donors to make those choices. And we work with Democrats up and down the ballot, from people running for presidential level campaigns all the way down to school board. And so if a donor encounters a, an Ask Blue form, they can save their information with us. And once they do that, all they have to decide is who they want to give to and how much. And because we all share that platform, it makes it really easy for donors. We have about 6 million people who save their information in something we call Blue Express accounts that make it easy for them to give. And so having that kind of shared platform where we all work together allows us to have those kind of network effects and those technological advantages and really, at the end of the day, prioritizes that experience for donors. And that's really important. If you want people to take those actions, you've got to respect their time yeah, and their experience. Your fifth donation could be way faster. Possible. Yeah. Uh, talking to Aaron Hill, executive director of Act Blue, processed $1.6 billion worth of donations. Republicans want to copy it. We're about to go to break. Aaron, a lot of callers have been calling it about the speaker debate. Uh, don't, want, don't want to ask you to weigh in on that. But is in your closing word, is there anything that policy makers should keep in mind with the rise of small donors having more influence on elections? Should policymakers be heeding that in some way? Uh, well, I think, uh, you know, there are a bunch of new voices that got elected to Congress, and uh, the small-dollar donors were the majority of the funds that a lot of them raised. And it will be interesting to see what kind of policies they enact and what kind of things that they push forward, knowing that they're working for the small-dollar donors, because I think that they're going to continue to be powerful going forward. Aaron Hill, thanks for joining us, and congratulations on making history. Thank you so much, Jefferson. Bye. 